What is going on, guys? How is everybody doing today? I know everyone must be surprised I'm not two hours late today. It's, it's always fantastic. However, I'm still trying to get everything put together because this one should be fun. Should be fun. Because it's always fun when you get to make fun of... Uh, DEI and journos and especially black girl gaming get to make more fun of the suicide squad we got a uh, IGN France that was hating on stellar blade and had to go back and edit their article we got tons of stuff to talk about today tons of stuff Hold on, still getting everything pulled up. One minute, one minute. Here we go. Uh, whoops, I closed something out. I wasn't supposed to. Shit. Come back. I think we're back. I think we're back. All right, I know it's Easter Sunday, so I hope everybody's having an Easter Sunday. I'm not expecting a ton of people to show up, <laughs> but if it happens, it happens. <laughs> I think I am ready to get this show on the road. Uh, something doesn't seem right. So I get with screwing with everything. Let's do this. No, no, thank you. All right, I think we're working. I think we're working here. All right. So let's start with... <clears throat> <coughs> Dude, I cannot wait till allergy season's over. And I get rid of this shitty cough. It's going to be fantastic. All right. But let's start off with some uh, some light topics first. Oh, go away. Go away. Let me just refresh. Let's see what the numbers are. See if they're updated. They are. That'll work. All right. All right, let's go. First one. So over the weekend, Godzilla X Kong released a new movie and... The critics absolutely despise this movie. The fans seem to love it, and I'm somewhere in the middle. But let's uh, let's read about this from Dexerta real quick. Godzilla X Kong stomps past MonsterVerse box office record. We'll get into that record in a second. Thursday night previews for the latest Monster MonsterVerse film prove the audiences were beyond thrilled to see it all play out. According to an earnings report via discussing film, Godzilla X Kong's opening night raked in a record. Ten million dollars. Ten million dollars is uh, their new high score for the Godzilla X Kong series. Such early box office success puts Adam Wingard directed film ahead of every other MonsterVerse project to date. We compare that to uh, Godzilla minus one, and oh boy, you got some work to do, guys. 
2014's Godzilla garnered 9.3 million in preview earnings. In 2017, Kong Skull Island previews brought in 3.7 million, and Godzilla King of the Monsters bowed to 6.3 million. The latest MonsterVerse adventure has a long road ahead of it, with early projections estimating the Gon- Godzilla vs. Kong or Godzilla X Kong will open between 45 and 50 million at the box office during Easter weekend. While critics are split on the film based on its 53% Rotten Tomato score, viewers have higher opinions of Godzilla X Kong thus far, and they're currently sitting at 92%. <clears throat> but what are the critics actually saying about this? Oh, I hate when tabs do this. Go away. Go away. That's where you think it was my first time streaming. Uh, There it is. There it is. So what do we have here? A 55% from the critics and a 93% audience score. But let's do the... Let's do what we always do and click on the top critics and all audiences. So all audiences is actually at a 92%, which granted it's better than the series and I would say the last movie, but the top critics have it sitting at a 30% audience score. There's, there's It's just there's not enough diversity in it, which is weird because every monster movie has nothing but women taming the kaiju giant monsters and befriending them and shaming men but they want more they want more dei injections into this but in case you're curious what they're actually saying about this here we go i highlighted just a couple to talk about godzilla x kong is a big and loud as expected but when the dust is settled there's nothing to hold on to the kaiju clash is a crushing bore now i did watch the movie it wasn't terrible. I think they put in too many monsters because I think there was like nine of them in this one. And they're all in at different times doing one big like 30 minute fight. And it was just, I didn't find it entertaining. And you know, it's the monster verse. So of course, entire cities get leveled, which I think at this point there's like, Tens of millions of people that have no homes and no city, but <laughs> ignoring that. Uh, we got another one Godzilla X Kong, the new empire is a mouthful of a title, and one that's surprisingly hard to parse out on its own, especially as it suggests more of a brand collab between those famed cinematic monsters than anything else. Yeah, they do. They've got like five different apes, Godzilla, a new Godzilla knockoff that's ice. Uh, Mothra's come back. They've got some like wannabe Kraken thing. It's just too much crammed in. It's like halfway through it, they realized Godzilla minus one was doing fantastic. We're like, do you think we could uh we could change this to add more monsters? Like that, they don't understand why people liked Godzilla minus one, and they're trying to derail their entire plot, which is I think why critics hate it because they're focusing less on female empowerment and more on monsters and if we've learned anything from the critics that's all they want is strong independent women uh but here's another one about halfway through godzilla x kong the new empire i turned to a fellow critic and asked a desperate question what the hell is this movie about well what it should have always been monsters fighting giant monsters fighting but how good is it actually doing are the numbers for Godzilla X Kong the New Empire. Domestic box office, 80 million. So it did better than the projections. We've seen the inflated Hollywood budgets. I don't have a numbers on the actual production cost of this. But I suspect it's probably in the 200 to 300 million dollar range, just like every other movie that Hollywood makes. So it's going to get close. I think it might actually make its money back. But it's it's still not a good movie. It's still not a good movie. What do you mean you don't have sound? Yeah, I have sound. 
Patrick, check your volume. I have sound. I'm watching this. I've got the stream pulled up. I can I can hear myself. Quit being a boomer. So I think this movie will break even. It might even do a little bit better than the normal production, but I don't think it's going to be a banger like we saw with Dune Part 2 or uh, let's say Oppenheimer or Barbie. It's just kind of going to be a break-even movie for Hollywood. But I would say the movie's about average. I'd give it a 5.5 out of 10. It's still got the woke talking points with women always trying to lead men into the places and tell them what to do. But it does have more monsters in it. It does have more monster fight. So I'll give it a... Uh... Patrick, I'm not muted. I have my stream pulled up. I'm not muted. You are. I have my stream up and can hear myself. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there you go. No, it's not me. It's not me. <laughs> like, I see people in here. It, it's and can anybody else hear me? Or is Patrick just a complete idiot and incapable of turning on his volume? All right. So Godzilla is done. Now this one. All right, you should be able to hear it now if you're not being a boomer. There we go. Everything's still highlighted. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Did uh did you get your uh, your issue fixed, Patrick? Yeah, yeah. I told you it wasn't me. <laughs> I told you it wasn't me. It was you. <laughs> I checked like four times before the stream started. How you doing, buddy? How you doing? How's the how's the hangover today? All right. So next topic, Sega Europe. Sega Europe. This is this is gonna be a, a long time. Where did my 2024 tech layoffs? Because I covered it earlier and I wanted to I covered it earlier this year and I wanted to reference that. It's a problem with having so many tabs. <laughs> you you do need your liver, Patrick. You, you do actually need your liver, sadly. January. Oh, I don't want this. I don't want you. When I had one that had... There we go. There we go. I'll get the, I'll get this all right eventually. All right. Let's uh let's talk about woke companies laying off even more. <laughs> oh, I wish I could find the old article. I wish I could find the old article. It had all the numbers and I was dying laughing. No, no, no. All right, so here we go. So back in January, all the 
weird woke companies were scrambling and terrified because there were tens of thousands of planned people being laid off just in the first quarter of 2024. And I, I said it was going to be far worse than they ever could have expected. Far worse. Tens of thousands of people from the gaming industry alone being laid off. Google laying off tens of thousands of employees. And boy, was I right. Sega Europe laying off 240 workers, selling off Company of Heroes developer Relic. Relic used to make very good games. I remember playing uh, the old Dawn of War series that Relic made. I remember playing the original Comp Company of Heroes. It was absolutely fantastic. Company of Heroes 2 was absolute garbage with nothing but DLC that pumped the price of the game well over $100. And Company of Heroes 3 and its early beta access got absolutely destroyed in reviews because of how terrible it was. But Sega Europe, Europe now has to lay off a ton of people because they have made terrible decisions. And Company of Heroes isn't the only one, but they do go over in the article. So let's see what's going on here. Sega Europe announced Thursday that selling off Company of Heroes 3 and Age of Empires 4 developer Relic Entertainment while cut, cutting approximately 240 jobs across several other Sega Europe studios. So Relic's not the only one. It's Sega in its entirety. <laughs> Relic Entertainment confirmed it's going independent with the help of an external investor. Under this new structure, it'll continue to support the Company of Heroes 3 and its next update coming in April. This is a huge change for us, but one thing does not change. We want to create amazing experiences for our players. I haven't believed that for years. For years. They've made terrible games. Uh, Dawn of War 3 was an absolute atrocity. That I think it's still Dawn of War, War 3 Steam. I think it's still got negative reviews on Steam. Oh, yeah, still got a ton. Still got a ton. Dawn of War 3. Dawn of War 2 was... It was a change from the, the original Dawn of War, I guess, trilogy at this point. Well, no, because there's more than more than three. Lots of Dawn of Wars. They were fantastic, and everybody loved them. Dawn of War 2 was a little bit different. It focused more on individual people in a squad. And then Dawn of War 3 came out, and yeah, it's still, it's still got mixed reviews. Nobody actually likes it. But maybe that was a Sega problem. Maybe they'll get back to making good games. <clears throat> Sega's share of Relic was transferred to a holding company that is to be newly established in the UK investment company, Emona Capital. Emona Capital is also invested in Amber, a game development service company. It invested $20 million into the company in 2022. So they're getting a little bit of money. Just, just a little bit. Sega Europe said it's laying off 240 people with their aim to optimize fixed expanse. Sega Europe Creative Assembly and Sega Hardlight, according to... Okay, so yeah, Creative Assembly has gone to absolute garbage. The uh, I would say the last four... No, last five Total War series. It's more than that. So... Rome 2 was okay. They made some changes. They definitely made it more normie friendly. It was less, less management, which I kind of didn't like and did like in some aspects. Attila was, it was its own game, but it felt like an expansion of Rome 2. Uh, Warhammer Total War was, has been, they've got three of those now. They're nothing but griffs. I absolutely hate them with tons of DLC. Uh, they did the remasters, which were fantastic. Uh, let's see. They did the, the Chinese one. That was awful. They did Troy. That was awful. Yeah. <clears throat> Creative Assembly's definitely gone hill, gone downhill. And here we go. Sega Europe blamed its restructuring on a reactionary decline from the stay-at-home demand in COVID-19 and the economic downturn due to inflation, which led to lowered profitability for the company. It's 2024 and Sega is blaming COVID for their bad sales. 2024, blaming COVID. You know, it's not that they put out 
terrible games for the last, what, 10 years? Has nothing to do with that. Industry trackers put the number of people laid off from the video game industry in 2024 to over 8,000. More than 10,000 people were laid off in 2023. Yes, it's massive layoffs. And I do believe it was Sega who was involved in Hyenas. And Hyenas didn't even make it out of early access before the studio was canceled and shut down. And I did do a video on it, and I did reference it a couple different times. But if you didn't know, Hyenas was a woke game. And when I say woke game, I actually mean woke in its entirety. It was entirely diverse female characters killing men in a shooter that was similar to Fortnite without the building. It was absolutely awful. I, I'm, I'm glad it failed. I'm glad they lost tens of millions of dollars on that game's development. They absolutely deserved it. But this game, this, it's Sega starting to go. They're all starting to go. It would not surprise me if all these industries by the end of the year don't lay off close to 200,000 people between uh, Google, Facebook, and the gaming industry because all these AAA titles, like we said here, or like they said here, demand in COVID-19 and the economic downturn due to inflation but they're still putting out games like Dragon's Dogma that's $120 with all the DLC on a day one release. And all these AAA titles are still doing it. Still doing it. And they're like, no, this is fine. Only it's not fine. And that's why they have to keep laying people off. All right. So that's that. Uh, what, what, you, what do we got here? At this point, we need a Wikipedia, a website that tracks all these woke companies with links, also tracks the fails when ESG bucks burn out, and SBI detected for everything. We do. We we genuinely need an actual catalog of... that's That's a task and a half. Keeping track of how many people are laid off, how much money they're losing, which company... Well, as far as ESG is concerned... That's pretty easy. So EFG is government mandated, at least in the US, if you're publicly traded, which is why a lot of the indie games that everybody loves do not have these weird diversity things in them, but things like Sega do. They're publicly traded. And Europe is an absolute cesspit for these weird, woke ideologies that's nothing but communist. Absolutely nothing but dirty commies. That game looked awful. Yes, yes, it did. Uh, Yeah, Disney's a dumpster fire. I don't know how... uh, I get Disney's like the biggest grift right now. And I'll cover it occasionally, but it's like this—it's the same thing every week out of Disney. They did some dumb woke nonsense, and everybody hates them except for the absolute nonsense weirdos. I—I I just get bored with covering it because it's the same exact thing. And I granted, I know they lost, but two of their lawsuits in the last month, like fantastic. But I will leave the Disney grip to uh, Andrew legal mindset because. Uh, He's got that thing unlocked between the uh, <laughs> the uh, VTubers thing and the Disney thing. I'll uh, I'll let him him keep that grip. What's up, Danielle? How you doing? I kind of didn't expect to see Danielle here today. Expected her to be out doing Easter Sunday stuff. Then again, she is kind of a degenerate. She just hides it very well. I'm on to you. I'm on to you. Speaking of dirty commies, speaking of dirty commies. Oh, you already did your Easter stuff. I guess it is 1.30 now, right? This one tickled me. Japanese Communist Party seeking to file formal United Nations complaint regarding manga featuring sexy female characters. 
at least they're honest about it now. <laughs> at least they're honest about it now. It's it's always been the commies. Always been the commies. And sadly proving that ongoing war against creative freedom is not just limited to entertainment in the West, it appears that Japanese Japanese Communist Party is preparing to file, file a formal complaint with the United Nations regarding the continued depiction of sexy women in Japanese magazines and manga. Because they want everybody in a paper bag that you can't see. And I say paper bag because we all know what I'm talking about when women are covered in head to toe in a single bed sheet. And you can't see anything. The party's latest political play was the first relevant on Mar fuck. The party's latest political play was first revealed on March 18th, courtesy of Misato Nakayama, a user on the Japanese open blog website Together. I scanned a QR code in the Shimbun Akahata, the local newspaper publication of the Japanese Communist Party and looked at the survey being conducted by Japanese feminist organization, the New Japan Women's Association, <laughs> wrote Nakayama. As machine translated by Deep L, it seemed that they were conducting a survey about magazines. The question was, were there any magazines in the store that you were interested in, such as adult-oriented magazines? <clears throat> I absolutely love that they're using One Piece. <clears throat> Nami is... <clears throat> Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Big Boba. <laughs> However, far from just actual <clears throat> adult magazines, many of the titles listed for selection in the survey were manga magazines for both younger shonen and older sign-in male demographics, the latter of which tend to include photo shoots of real-world female models, including Akita Shoden's weekly shonen champion, Shusha Weekly Jonin Jump, and... Haku Sencha's, look, I'm American. I'm going to butcher these names. I'm just going to have to deal with it. Young Animal, the last entry, perhaps best known as the home magazine of late Kento Mura. Oh, Kentaro Mura's Berserk. God, reading's hard today. <clears throat> yeah, Berserk was absolutely, uh, it was good, but it was bad. In a three-day preliminary, pre is this what I get for being a Jew and streaming on Easter Sunday? I can't talk. In a three-day preliminary survey, 517 stores conducted at the end of December, where we found that adult magazines and convenience stores, which we thought had disappeared through our campaigns and surveys, were making a comeback in various locations. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. We tried to uh, we tried to ban sexy women, and uh, oh, the base chads were like, nah. Bring them back, fam. Bring them back. I, I think that covers a lot of what the article's saying, because I've I've said it before about how Korea and Japan, Korean and Japan, Korean and Japanese companies are firing all these woke weirdos, communists and feminists straight out of there. I've done it. What three videos on that now? That <laughs> they're just like, now nah, y'all are weird. Y'all are costing us money. We're just gonna sell what the fans want, which is the way it should be. It shouldn't be this crazy nonsense. I do love that art. Just attractive women, small bikinis, just chilling, hanging out. But I mean, I guess that's why there's so much anticipation for Stellar Blade. Like, let's not pretend like nobody's waiting on Stellar Blade because they're giving us absolutely beautiful, beautiful gameplay. And every time it pops up on Twitter, I just, I have to, I have to sit there and just admire, admire the idle animations of the game. This one's for all you chads out there. All right, all right. But we, we are seeing a resurgence of absolutely fantastic women in gaming from at least some of the studios. Maybe not all of them, but some of them. And I, I have lots of hope for Eastern developers and Eastern writers that we're going to get good stuff. 
I just can't wait for the West to die. It can't, it can't happen fast enough. All right. They just kept filling up dumpsters full of cash and setting on fire. You're not wrong. You're absolutely not wrong. Dirty commies, not one freaking inch. Gatekeep your hobbies. Yes, gatekeep everything. Zealously gatekeep everything. Because if you don't gatekeep it, they come in and destroy it. Mazel tov. Thanks. What's up, Pie Case? How are you doing today? I'm glad you joined in to uh, hear my rant about sexy women. <laughs> uh... Which actually kind of kind of goes back into another article here. And I wish I could find this article because I would have loved to have read the entire thing. Where did it go? Because IGN is still absolutely being complete weirdos and apparently have never seen a woman, a woman, or any real women in their lives. I can't find the article. It doesn't appear to be archived. I haven't found it. But here we go. IGN writer Ben Osala insults Stellar Blade director, artist, Hyung Tai Kim, who has married fellow concept artist, Jayun Che. And here's the little snippet of the article that somebody managed to get. It's not new, and other games have chosen to highlight the strengths of female characters, but where a Bayonetta stands out with an iconic character design, or a 2B from Near Automata, inspires an entire generation of cosplayers, Eve from Stellar Blade is just bland. A doll sexualized by someone who has never seen a woman. And this, this literally, no joke, was written four days ago. Four days. So well over a month after the company released footage of them scanning the woman and putting her model of her body into the game. IGN France comes out and is just like, it's not a real woman, y'all. You know that, right? Y'all know that. But that's not the only thing. This is her. This is the concept artist. Fantastic. I love it. I love it. I love watching all these weird game journals get absolutely destroyed. Get absolutely wrecked. I mean, she's pretty cute. I'd smash. I'd absolutely smash. But uh, we've got this one too. Microsoft publishes new inclusion guide for video game devs. Recommends against creating female characters with exaggerated body proportions. Uh, that music might get me copyrighted. Here's some more footage from the game where this is a 3D scan of a real woman. Not exaggerated, real. Real woman. God, these weird people have never seen a woman in their lives. So here we go. Microsoft has released a new product inclusion guide for video game developers, which in addition to a number of other such recommendations, aimed at appeasing the terminally online, notably suggests that creators completely abstain from depicting any sexualized or unrealistic female characters within their works. So they want every woman to be fat and ugly and androgynous. All right, so this is what they said on March 20th. Approachability, which ensures all players existing and new experience a novice feel safe and welcome. Representation is about reflecting the diversity of the player and creator community so everyone can feel that they belong. Globalization is about making global players feel at home. It's like, how many times does Alex Jones have to be right? Fucking globalist. It's the damn globalist. Accessibility. Yeah, it's just, this is absolutely getting insane that even like, what, a month, a month and a half 
they're still saying these aren't real proportions to women. And the companies are like, we literally scanned the woman. Here's her. And they're like, and we're going to ignore that and write more articles that they're unrealistic. God, these people are so weird. So weird. I guess I left that up. Patrick with the butts. Get wrecked commies. Yes. I don't think anybody here does. I don't think you hear anybody here is going to have an issue with sexy women. What's up, Grandmaster Chris? Yeah, I'm going to try and get there. I'll see when this stream ends. Protect the waifus. Protect all the waifus. All of them. Every single one of them. Boys, get your tower shields. Get your swords. Get your spears. Get your rifles. Keep your rifles by your side. Yes, happy Easter to all our Christian brethren. And may we one day embark on a great crusade to cleanse the world of the utter disease that has infected it. Smash the light, the Hulk. Or oh, smash like the Hulk. Yeah, I'm going to ban you one day. <laughs> smash like the Hulk. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So I think this one's going to be a live stream exclusive because there's not a ton to talk about. But I thought it was just kind of funny. Oppenheimer finally opens in Japan, and viewers are divided. I could not imagine why. People in Japan are divided on Oppenheimer. <laughs> maybe it has something to do with the nuke. Maybe. Maybe they're still just a little bit salty about that. Yes, okay, it's not just a nuke. <laughs> it was multiple nukes, but still. <laughs> Uh, Christopher Nolan's Oscar-winning epic revolves around the Taylor father of the atomic bomb. It was earlier suspected the movie could be banned in Japan, <laughs> given the nuking we did. Given its framing of the nuke from the point of view of its maker without any scenes from the perspective of the people affected and the Barbenheimer marketing, which is fantastic. We got Barbie <laughs> being a... Uh, being a uh, uh, strong independent whammon, and we had Oppenheimer dropping absolute nukes everywhere. <laughs> Accused by some of trivializing the atrocity of the bombings. Uh, anybody who wants to criticize the bombings of Japan needs to look into what Japan did and why we determined it was okay to drop those bombs. That might be something they need to look into rather than just saying bombing people was bad. However, more than eight months on from its original theatrical release, Oppenheimer has arrived in theaters in Japan. Reacting to the film, former Hiroshima mayor Takashi Hiraka said, as per the Hollywood Reporter, from Hiroshima's standpoint, the horror of nuclear weapons was not sufficiently depicted. The film was made in a way to validate the conclusions that the atomic bomb was used to save the lives of Americans. So, <laughs> so, Toshiyuki Mimaki, a co-chair founder for Hidankyo, bringing together a different A-bomb survivor group, also told The Guardian, I was waiting for the Hiroshima bombing scene to appear, but it never did. It's important to show the whole history, including the victims, if we are going to have a future without nuclear weapons. Uh, it's not what the movie was about. It's quite literally not what the movie was about. And, and at the end of it, towards the end of it, he actually, they actually do show like, like I have created a weapon that's capable of killing so many people and I wish I never did. Others offered more praise with one viewer telling the AP the movie was great, stressing the topic was a great interest to Japanese, although emotionally volatile as well. Sophie University from Professor Kazuhiro Meishima also said that the film illustrates the evolution of the American conscience that works. That work shows an American that has changed dramatically. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, a bunch of Japanese are mad because we made a movie about creating the atomic bomb and didn't show them getting bombed. And others are like, eh, this is kind of a good movie. <laughs> uh, 
Crusade, crusade, crusade. <laughs> Damn it, Patrick. <laughs> oh. All right. All right. Uh, oh, nope. Go away. Go away. And uh, I don't think I'm going to edit this one into a video, so you might be getting two exclusive live stream uh, little articles here. I thought this one was kind of interesting. And it's only interesting because I think I brought it up last week. And, uh, yeah, we got new news since then. Gypsy Rose separates from husband Ryan Anderson three months after prison release. Now, if you don't remember, she's the one that was... Uh, uh, oh, fuck. Munchausen by proxy, like her mother was torturing her and making her do all sorts of tests and poisoning her to keep her crippled and get all the attention. And uh, this dude and her plotted to kill her mother, did kill her mother, and they both went to prison. And she got released, and she's like, "Yeah, I'm divorcing you now. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go live my life." Which, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's happening. So she hooks up with this dude, tells him he lo she loves him, gets him to help her murder her mother. They go to prison. And then as soon as she's out of prison, she's like, I'm out, Holmes. Like, if that isn't the modern tw 21st century woman for you. Ah, it's just, it's a crazy story, like, how this is going. Uh, granted, she probably has a bunch of, uh, mental issues i mean we're talking about women here they all have mental issues this was just crazy oh he's not the the boyfriend killer i thought he was i thought he was so wait hold on hold on hold on Yeah, this is all true crime stuff. I don't I don't care about it. I thought it was a crazy story. All right, so wait, she got the boyfriend to kill the mother. They go to prison. She dumps him, marries another dude, who I assume is, I guess, not in prison, which would make sense why they're taking pictures together. I assume she milked him for money, so she got a, her commissary in prison. And then gets out <laughs> and leaves him. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's a it's a woman. They're, they're gonna have simps. Simps are awful. Simps are awful. Patrick, I'm looking at you. Simps are awful. Oh that makes it even worse. I thought it was just bad. That makes it even worse. So she was just. Rolling around different dudes. Uh, that's even worse. All right. Well, are you ready for some uh, black girl gamers? <laughs> At least you agree. <laughs> What's going on, future Miss Martin? I uh, I do greatly appreciate the shout out on Sean stream. <clears throat> I was uh, I was not expecting that at all. And you gave me a happy birthday too. That was fantastic. But uh, let, let's go on to the uh, the black gamer girl drama because <laughs> this is uh this is like watching morons and well it's like watching retards slap fight each other. Like, it's funny to watch, but you feel bad after. She was engaged to the other guy while she was in prison, but he couldn't handle the fame, so they broke up. Then this guy started... God. I think we should have, like, a simp registry. And then whenever we go to war, whoever's on the simp registry goes to the front of the line to get drafted. So we can just clear that mess out first. I think I think that's a it's a valid thing. 
All right. So let's talk about the uh, the Black Girl Gamers drama, which I've technically covered, but it's it's getting even worse. But it's also kind of funny because, like I said, you don't trust women on the internet. You, you just don't do it. Especially when they're grifters and trying to shill their stuff. How they go from being absolutely on the side of DEI and woke gaming to black girls need gamer spaces to saying, well, I'm not making money, so I'm going to grift from the other side that has money and seem to be doing good. Let's, let's, let's dial back for just a second. Gothics, who is a, well, was a black gamer girl for them, decided she wanted to uh, change her point of view and grift on the right side and you know, complain that woke gaming is bad. Just pulling a 180 and doing the whole grift thing. Has now called out, now that Black Gamer Girls is in the spotlight, or Black Girl Gamers. I should rearrange that. Black Gamer Girls kind of flows better. Anyway, digressing. Decided that now that they're in the spotlight, she's going to get her grift. Grift on, girl. Get it. I love seeing infighting. And I call them out for their DEI woke nonsense and harassment of people who don't agree with them, which we've been dealing with for years at this point. So it's nothing special, but get that grip, girl. But Black Gamer Girls comes out and decides to just create a 33 thread response to gothics on Twitter instead of just taking a picture or a screenshot of something they could write and posting it in there. It's got to be 33 pages long. Who the hell is telling these people to do this? Guys, never post a 33-thread reply on Twitter. Don't do it. Nobody's going to read it. Nobody cares. <laughs> like, oh, this is this is girl fighting. This is exactly what this is. <clears throat> this is girls arguing online, just constant replies to everything. But it's not, it's not it gets even worse. Part two. <laughs> it keeps going on. So as much the gist of the story is. Gothics uh, decided to adopt the right non-woke side of gaming and movies and complained about the Black Little Mermaid, which, look, we all knew it was going to be trash when we saw the pictures of her being black. Let's be honest. We knew it was going to be trash. And they harassed her out of the Black Girl Gamers. And she didn't say anything until it came up recently because it's a grift. But she said she was kicked out and harassed and done all these things. And Black Girl Gamers comes back and says, hey, we uh, we got screenshots of everything you did. We didn't kick you out. You left. So this is absolutely just nothing but a girl fight. And I think it's funny. <laughs> uh, I love watching uh, people pretending to be right, fighting with their old leftist pals. <laughs> And the fact that they're girls just makes it even funnier. <laughs> Cause they're, uh, either way, I don't care. I hope Black Girl Gamers absolutely fails. I covered it in a previous video. It's nothing special. It's just another one of those uh, woke DEI. We do nothing but hire black people, so nothing's ever going to happen to us type deals. Internet retards fighting just tickles me somewhere inside. Just... Tickles me inside. I just can't do it. <laughs> Especially conning women. Yes, absolutely. I thought all women on the internet were feds or imaginary. They are. I may have seen you in person, but I still think you're a fed. But uh, what's it going on, biochemist? I uh, appreciate you showing up for the stream. You are a figment of Ben's imaginations. You're a dude in a fed. That's that's what it really is. It's all fed ops. It's a manifesto. You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. Yep, she goes off what she learned there is a little more wrong versus right. But I think she has this range of white lies, griffs that are acceptable because in comparison to her mom, it's harmless. 
You are absolutely a fed. Sean's a fed too. He just pretends not to be a fed so he can get non-fed bucks. He's going to ruby ridge us one day. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Oh, the psyops do go hard. But again, you're a fed, so you know all about that. The content writes itself. Yeah, I just, I tried reading it. It's just nothing but girl drama. And I'm like, I don't care about this at all. It's funny, but I don't care. Sean is on the fed list. He's definitely not a fed. I have seen plenty of videos of feds rolling up on each other trying to arrest each other, okay? You can be on a fed list and still be a fed and get in a shootout with feds, okay? Let's not pretend like that hasn't happened. <laughs> uh, uh, feds are think feds are the best. I absolutely love it. Quit paywalling articles. I'm not paying you, Kotaku. I'm not doing it. And we'll do this real quick. We'll do this. Where'd you go? While we're waiting, because I got one last thing thing I want to talk about on the stream. But this, we'll do this before we get to that. I think she needs date therapy. Come to terms with things and to grow into an adult. All this fame is not helping her. Yeah, well, anybody who's been kind of famous as a kid has absolutely turned out to be terrible people. All right, so we got this one and one more topic I want to talk about. Dilbert creator Scott Adams dismantles DEI ideology, slams Democrats for using victimization as a tool for success. And if you're not familiar, Scott Adams has, uh, well, turned to being extremely based over the last two years, two years, three years, and uh, been kicked out of, well, newspapers, and nobody wants to print his comics anymore because he agrees Democrats are kind of terrible. Scott Adams, best known as the creator of the long-running comic strip Dilbert, has taken to social media to obliterate diversity, equity, and inclusion ideology, placing the blame on Democrats for using victimization as a tool for success. The only way they're successful is when the government pays for it because nobody else does. So what did he say? Allow me to put a stake through the heart of DEI for you. Adams prefaced in a fairly lengthy post on Twitter, if DEI proponents wanted to achieve the kind of diversity that's good for every member of society, they would correct the Democrat-Republican imbalance in our most important companies. A lack of Republican on staff caused Twitter, Facebook, and Google to censor free speech for years before getting caught. A lack of Republican voices in the corporate news business. Excluding the Fox News bubble, let's be honest, they're, they're still Democrats allowed over 20 major political hoaxes to flourish in the past five to seven years, further pointing out the right had a few too. A lack of Republicans destroyed the reputation of Harvard. Republicans would have added balance to leadership. Google's Gemini AI, literally the future of their business, died in the crib because of a lack of Republicans on staff. Well, a lack of anybody. Like, let's put this, well, anybody right of Marx is considered alt-right, so... The centrist would have helped a lot just as much. But here he goes on. Are you thinking of getting a face tattoo and dropping out of school? Talk to a Re Republican before you do that. Adam suggests any Republican anywhere, anytime, they will stop what they are doing and give you honest and useful advice. You can talk to a centrist too. <laughs> like, like You can talk to anybody outside of the left and I'll be like, that's probably a bad idea. And so he goes on to say, and if you follow that advice, they will offer you a job or recommend you because people who can take advice and implement it are like diamonds. Everybody wants them. He keeps going on. Check the stats. Republican women literally have a fraction of the mental health issues of liberal women. And I love that that New York Post article came out. I covered the hell out of that. <laughs> liberal women are mentally ill. <laughs> 
Now look at the saucer-eyed Democrats on MSNBC and tell me they don't look mentally ill. <laughs> Rachel Madcow for the win. <laughs> in February of 2023, Adams came under scrutiny after weighing in on a Rasmussen Reports poll, which found that a very small percentage of Black Americans disagreed with it's okay to be white statement, leading to individuals on social media to falsely accuse Dilbert author of both being a racist and a segregationist. But, you know, they want their own black spaces and jobs and schools and society and housing. But you, you were like, that's that's kind of a bad thing. And they're like, you're racist. Let us be segregated. But th this is the harassment. The guy, the guy, look, I know I'm old. I grew up reading Dilbert comics when I was a kid. Fantastic. The dude's been around forever, forever. Yes, I know I just aged myself. I read newspapers as a kid. Thanks. And he's like, last year, he's like, yeah, you know, this is kind of bad. Gone. Just gone. Wiped out of existence from the comic, from the uh, newspapers, which probably wasn't doing much money on. He's probably doing better now, but th this is, this is it. This is perfectly summing up everything that is wrong. When just a dude that used to be a Democrat is like, y'all are kind of retarded and should probably get your shit together. But you can't say that today. Cannot say that today. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Sean's got perfect timing. Let me do this real quick. So I have a special guest today because I gotta I gotta grift some stuff, right? That ought to work. What's yes, up? Hello. Not too much. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh, yes, yeah, so, our, so our boy, uh, David, the legal scholar of Arkansas. Absolutely. The... Yes. yes. Yes, the unclean hands. The uncleanest of them all. <laughs> the hot dog guzzler himself. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, yeah, um... I, I know a little bit about Acer Thorn. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I learned about Acer, Acer Thorn's existence back in, I want to say 2020 or 2021. Because mm -hmm. um, I was watching IGP and he said some stuff about it and uh, what he was doing to Sid Alpha. And that's when I figured out who Sid Alpha was and I started following his channel. So I knew there was some crazy lawsuit stuff going on. The dude was uh, suing everybody. Well, yes, he has pretty much sued everyone. Yeah, quite literally everyone. I'm, I'm expecting a lawsuit when I get done with the stream. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I th there's a reason why I said the things the way I said when I was covering this on Saturday night or Friday night, specifically talking to him like, here's what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, it's one thing when he attacks people who don't who need to go get an attorney to fight back. But when he wants to like people like him don't generally fight somebody who's willing to fight back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they shy away from fights. Uh, there's some there's some people that've been here since the uh, start of my channel. I, uh, yeah. I I'm Jewish, so you know, I call them my Mossad agents and have them deal with stuff quietly. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> the, <laughs> the hit squads are a real thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, hold on one second. But yeah, no, I saw Sid Alpha won his. Um, I didn't see how he won. That was kind of before mm -hmm. I really started watching all the law tube stuff. So S what happened with Sid's? Okay. So this all started out because he was suing people for what they were doing on YouTube. Well, part of that also involves eventually, um, when it comes to lawsuits, you need to have all the important parties. Everybody has to be involved. So you can't decide not to... Now, if you're the plaintiff, you can decide not to sue somebody. But the defendants get get the ability to say, wait, wait, wait. You need to bring in this other guy. You didn't you didn't name him. He has to be in the suit. It's called joinder. And you you have the right to demand that third parties get properly joined to a lawsuit. Um, because you you might tactically decide not to sue someone. And in Acer Thorne's case, he was deciding not to sue Google. Because YouTube runs YouTube runs Google. Or, I'm sorry, Google runs YouTube. Google runs YouTube. 
And there's a reason why. Because at that point, Google comes in like an asteroid and just nukes your case. Because, you know, you think you could bully people because Acer Thorne doesn't have a, you know, he gets his uh, Social Security payments. Okay, cool. So he's he's judgment proof and he can harass you or Sid Alpha by bullying you and forcing you to get an attorney and defending yourself. Okay. Google could come in and they've got I mean literally they have an unlimited checkbook. And they will wait, they can afford a hundred thousand dollars to fight you. That's a rounding error. Yeah. They write that off in a heartbeat. So they they literally have fuck you money. And that that you know, it's a term. They can afford to do whatever they want, and it does you know, a $250,000 lawsuit. You know what? I guarantee you there's people who are probably working with Google. They tell their attorneys, just bill. Like, until it gets to, like, a million dollars, don't bother telling us. Or, or some some amount where you're like, whoa, that's crazy. It's like, but Google's worth, a, you know, a couple trillion dollars. So they don't need to be worried about every nickel and dime. And they came in, and they blew up Acer Thorn's suit. And it worked because then everybody else, because then it became Acer Thorn versus Google. And Sid Alpha's case, too, um, the Google case, Google was able to fight Acer Thorn long enough that they got him declared as vexatious litigant. And that is somebody who has clearly demonstrated they can't follow the rules. Basically, they're cancerous. Um, that it's demonstrated they don't follow the rules of court, that they file frivolous lawsuits to terrorize and harass people and to eat up court resources. That happened in that suit. The thing is, once that happens, and once a court finally labels you a vexatious litigant, that's like the first domino, and it falls, and then the next one falls. And then after a while, it starts falling faster, 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 faster. So Acer Thorne's now in that spot. He's now been declared a vexatious litigant in two separate district courts from different ends of the country. And now things are going to start speeding up. So that's where things are starting to fall apart for him. The other thing is, he doesn't... He can't plead things properly, so he always keeps losing at the motion to dismiss stage, and he keeps on staying in this mud hole of filing motions to reconsider, and like the unclean hands thing. He keeps on doing this. He keeps challenging the court, saying you're wrong. And the courts, in the most recent one um, I covered with uh, Ace Thorne and Google, he has screwed up so much, the court said, okay, you no longer have the right to use the electronic filing system in California anymore because you're that much of an asshole. So he's the L's are coming fast for Acer Thorn and they're only going to speed up from here. So <laughs> sorry, that was a long, that was a long thing. My, I no, that, that's great. Like it's even yeah. Greer isn't as bad, like hasn't been well, told to stop filing yet, but Acer Thorn has, that, no. that's going to sum it up pretty yeah, to an extent, but I will say Acer Thorne is better about the... I think he makes better legal arguments than Greer does. And unlike Greer, Acer Thorne keeps fighting. Greer uses... He stalls, and he stalls, and he makes excuses, and he plays stupid. So, kind of like what happened with Kiwi Farms. He filed a motion and then sat on his hands for nearly 70 days and didn't respond to anything, and then the case got sent down to Florida. Um, Russell Greer... He, I mean, Acer Thorne's smarter than Greer, I, I would argue. Um, I, I think just based on the overall ability, and Acer Thorne is motivated. Now, that's the difference. Acer Thorne is, if you guys aren't aware, he is, he, he's, he's autistic as, like, hell. He's so autistic, he got SSI right away. And he's on SSI because he never paid in, you know, he never, he never worked on his own to the point where he could be insured, like, to get disability. He's that bad. He's also probably got some sort of schizophrenia or some sort of severe mental illness, but he's also a super malicious human being. Russell Greer is kind of just like a chintzy scumbag who wants to make money. Acer Thorne is a man who wants to see people suffer. And I think that, you know, you could argue that's a difference without distinction, but I think there is a big distinction. Russell Greer is relatively harmless. Um, Acer Thorne, you could see like murdering hookers at a truck stop at some point. Um, honestly, so... That, that's the way I look at it. Yeah, I mean, Greer just takes him to Olive Garden and, you know, tries to buy off strippers with flowers. Yeah, well, he gets, <laughs> yes, he, 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 and as much as, like, he likes to argue that didn't work out for him that way, I mean, he wanted it that way. He took him to Olive Garden because then he doesn't have to get to the awkward part of, like, you know, whatever happening from there. So, 
as much as he likes to argue that's not what I wanted, I'm like, ah, I'm, you know, we, we, we do what we, 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 you're the one in charge of the ship, Captain, and you set that course, so. So, okay, so that's what happened with SIDS is Google came in with their infinite money and said, uh, eat shit. It's yeah, because they were, they were a necessary party. So Google's like, oh, cool. Another one needs to crush. And I mean, they crush these lawsuits all day long. All kinds of people sue them. And they just got to come to the Northern District of California and just, boom, they nuke them all. I mean, it's easy enough. But so I, I'm sure whoever's dealing with this is frustrated with uh, Ace Return because he just doesn't stop. Yeah, but now he's going after the farms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I, I know you covered it. And I caught a little mm -hmm. bit of it. Yeah. He's okay. not... No, no, this is, it's really good. It's, 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 it's very meta in a sense. So Russell Greer got his case sent back down from the court of appeals and he won the appeal of the dismissal motion. And the 10th circuit said the theory of contributory copyright infringement. Well, it, he, he's presented the theory of it and he's presented a plausible set of facts that the court has to presume are true at the dismissal stage. And now, you know, they have to litigate from there. Like, so Russell Greer survived summary judgment. Acer Thorne, um, oh, hold on here. Um, so Acer Thorne looked at that and said, huh. And what had happened is, um, well, I, actually, I need to start, keep on the Greer case. In response to that, Noel decided, fine, we're going to the Supreme Court. And so they filed a petition of certiorari, which is where you ask the judges, you know, will you please hear our case? And that's pending. Asia Thorne came out with a video of why they're going to lose. Now, are they, are they, is it likely the farm's going to get granted certiorari? No. Just the odds are against you in general. Now, they do have a unique issue that the court of appeals completely turned. And there's, there are law scholars that read this opinion. This is basically kind of set back copyright law, 45, 50 years in the 10th circuit. It's overturned. It's that bad. Even though this isn't, you know, other cases might get decided differently by other judges in the 10th circuit. This is, this isn't a good ruling. So the court might take it up because this is a pretty big problem. Otherwise, though, they're not going to take, you know, it's novel enough, but just just on its face. I mean, you're in lottery ticket territory when you're trying to get cert. So Ace of Thorne looked at that and said, I've got an idea. So he made his video and he's right about that, but his reasoning's wrong. And somebody in the farms uploaded it for the purpose of archiving. Because that's what the farms does. Things get archived. It's documentation of here's what this person does. And for Acer Thorne, everything he puts out is just absolute garbage. And people are like, look at this cringe work. We're, we're, we're saving it for history because he can't ever delete it then. Well, Acer Thorne contacts Null and says, hey, your guy just put it up. Take it down as part of the DMCA. And, you know, being here on YouTube, you understand that's an issue at times. If you, if you just upload somebody's stuff straight up, they'll say take it down. So you have to take it down. Null then tells the guy, hey, Acer Thorne is losing his mind over this. Please take it down and re-upload it with commentary and criticism in it or something that transforms it into fair use. Um, at that point, then Null also puts up his Acer Thorne's response. Is it because Acer Thorne's just a smug asshole? And he, pu he publishes those uh, retraction letters up on the... And he's got a spot where this... Ha he's got like a retraction letter uh, page that he puts up. All that, all these up. So the guy takes the video down, re-uploads it with commentary and criticism. Acer Thorne looks at that and says, aha, that's no different than the theory Russell Greer is alleging, contributory copyright infringement. And the idea there is Null has not told people to stop doing it, and he's letting them host, in Russell Greer's case, a link to Google Drive. And on this Google Drive is all the crap Russell Greer made. That's already copyrighted. So the idea is that Null's not effectively stopping it and that he put Russell Greer's cease and desist letter up and he's mocking Russell Greer, calling him drooly, you know, calling him rat face, all of that. 
And Russell Greer is arguing that Null is encouraging this, and it's the idea that I'm not I'm not actively copyright infringing, but I'm basically telling other people go ahead and do it. Well, Acer Thorne sees this now the same way. He's trying to basically make the same set of facts that this is contributory copyright infringement, like through a third party. So it's funny that Russell Greer got a ruling. Acer Thorne made a video about it. The Farns put up that video that Acer Thorne made. And now Acer Thorne's using the ruling that Russell Greer made to go after the Farns for putting up that video. Like I said, it's very meta at the end of the day. I, like when you think about it, it it's a very yeah. much a, it's a, it's almost like a, it's a, it's a, it's this circle but it also it's 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 a, it's a circle of facts. It's not like a straight line of facts or it branches off. Literally, the facts kind of go right back to the beginning, and that's where we are. It's it's a very meta situation. Yeah, I mean, at, at least I can comprehend the Greer argument. Like, hey, yeah. you're sharing the link to my stuff. But in Acer Thorns, like, hey, mm -hmm. we took down the videos. So they re-uploaded it with commentary. Yeah, that shouldn't negate the entire thing just well, right off the bat. It doesn't, but the Acer Thorns problem is you're never going to do enough for him. When you read his thing, he talks about threadbare. Well, Russ, for Acer Thorn, how much how much criticism is proper? And even if you criticize him, if you mock him and denigrate him, he doesn't consider that proper criticism. So, like that, there's a good chance he might try to send a letter out to me. I don't know. I think he's housebroken enough to know that I'm not afraid to fuck with him. And you know, he wants to fuck with me. I will fuck him back just as hard. So I think he's not going to do that to me. But I spent time watching like that video. I started talking about all these little clips he made. They're all re they're all derivative of each other. They're only like 20 seconds long and you know so on and so on and so on. Then I mocked him for the gameplay, then I mocked him for what he was saying, then I mocked him for how he was saying it. So I'm sure I'm, you know, I I, I intentionally I want to I dare I'm daring him because at this point if if I'm not if what I did wasn't fair use then I don't know what is. Yeah, yeah. So, because the courts would be very pressed to find against me there. But I, I think I think uh, the problem is, though, he thinks he can bully the farms, and he's going to try. He's going to lose. Um, he's got a big issue um, in the fact that he's a vexatious litigant. And Noel's attorneys, Noel's attorney, uh, Matthew Harden, is really good about this. He already told the court in West Virginia, hey, this guy's already getting in trouble everywhere else he files. This is clearly him screwing around and being the same way again. So they're demanding the court pre-screen him, and they're pre-screening him for informa pauperis, meaning he's, a, in, you know, for a pauper. He's too poor to file the filing fees for a lawsuit, which is like 400 bucks. So because of that, he gets to file for free. And we do that because we don't want people, if you're too poor, that shouldn't be a bar to getting your claim in the courthouse. So there's stuff involved in this. And I, I think uh, Noel's attorney didn't probably, I think he dropped the, the one thing I don't think he filed properly was that Acer Thorne admits he hired somebody for commission work. Now, granted, he probably used Fiverr, but still, you know, Acer Thorne didn't say that. He says, I, I hired a composer a foreign composer to make these for me. He said, then I hired an attorney to draft a contract for us. And then he says, I paid to register all my copyrights. Well, when you're, when you're proceeding and you know, when you're claiming you're too poor to pay, you literally have to show like, I can't afford to do stuff. Well, if you're affording to go do all this crap, then how poor are you really? Now, this is where you can also use this to embarrass Acer Thorne, because he would never say he used Fiverr, because that'd be embarrassing. And that he used a lawyer. He probably didn't use a lawyer. He probably copied a contract off Google. But I want I I think part of this is he should have to suffer, and we should have to have him admit that. So right now, um, it, this is kind of all up in the air. Um, I think the court's going to take a look at this because, yeah, they're going to have to realize this guy's already got problems everywhere else he goes. They're not going to want these problems. So I don't think this case is going to go very far ultimately. But you're going to see probably for the next six months, Acer Thorne filing motions to reconsider and saying, no, you got it wrong. Please change your mind. And they say no. And he's like, OK, but please reconsider. I still think you got it wrong. And he's just going to keep going. And he's going to talk about unclean hands and all that nonsense again and again and again. Yeah, this dude seems absolutely insane. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and this is the, guys, this if you aren't aware, this is Acer Thorne. This is a. 
This is the video that he made that he ended up suing Sid Alpha and multiple people over. Yeah, this isn't fan art. This is real life for him. Yes. <laughs> um, that's his that's his little hovel in uh, Harrison, Arkansas. And he if you go onto the farms, it's on the first page of his uh, thing. This is the Were Turkey, the gobbler video, and he's gobbling and spurging out off screen and wanders around for about an hour like this until he realizes that the camera was on. And then when people started airing it and making fun of him, he like Sid Alpha, he tried to sue for copyright infringement, and the courts have said in a you know, a copy for copyrighted work to be copyrighted, it has to be intentionally created. So he claims I didn't I accidentally left the camera on. Well, that's not an that's not an intentional work, so it can't be copywritten. Um the same thing with there's a case where a monkey took a picture with a camera. And they're like you know, the guy tried to copyright that and the courts are like, no, you can't do that because that wasn't intentional. So they're that that's the ultimate reason why Acer Thorne lost that case. And yes, that Google came in and you know, here Google's gonna have to come in as well because you know, I think the internet's gonna have you know, the service providers, everybody, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's just I've trying to get caught up in everything that's happened with this dude over the years. Because yeah. once the Sid Alpha thing was done, I was mm-hmm. like, All right, there's a there's no yeah. point in me keeping up with this. But yeah, it's been f- insane. And, and if it's not him, he's going to do more eventually. He's going to do another thing coming up. I mean, once he once he gets done with this guy, he's he's going to do it again somewhere else to somebody else. And you know, there are and some people have asked me, are there people who have been declared vexatious litigants in every court in America? Yes, there have been. Um, every federal court, there's 93 districts. Um, have people been done that way? Yes. Um, he's he's working his way there now. He's working his way there now, but three down, so, three down. <laughs> so, like, how does that work? Does you, Do you just get, like, enough courts saying you need to cut this out? The rest just kind of say we're just going to add them to our, you know, list of. Well, what what they'll say is you're doing the same thing here you did everywhere else. It. it we're, we're we agree and it takes it takes the other party to point out this guy's and look this guy's doing the exact same thing he did everywhere else he is doing um they're pointing out that he's filing in the west the, the southern district of west virginia to avoid having to possibly go back to the northern district of california where the internet companies are all the isps google youtube everybody is there and he's not allowed to be there anymore. So he files on other courts and he's hoping nobody's going to notice. He tried this, um, the Western District of Arkansas, for example. Like he sued Walmart. He sued a mental health counseling group that he was working with. He sued the place he went to school at because he showed up at school and acted like such a lunatic. They kicked him out of school right away. Um, all kinds of, uh, basically anybody and everybody. He sued his dad in federal court. This is after he'd stabbed his dad. So it's after he stabbed him. Yeah. So the Western District said, we're not going to take your cases anymore. And the way it works is at that point, you have what's called a, you still have the right to sue, but you're subject to what's called a pre-screening injunction. The court imposes its own rule on you that anything you send in automatically has to get screened by the court. So a judge or a magistrate looks over your lawsuit before you get to file it and you send it in, they take a look at it and they determine whether or not they think it's worthy. So you've lost the ability just to file a lawsuit and then challenge it in court. The court preemptively looks at yours and there's a presumption you're filing bullshit. Now, if it turns out you have a legitimate claim, they'll let it proceed. But if they don't think it's good enough, they'll say, you know, denied, you can't file this. And the way he's getting, he was trying to get around that for a while is he would file in the Eastern District of Arkansas. So the Eastern District of Arkansas would look at it and they'd say, huh, you know what? This case isn't here. I think this guy accidentally filed this in the wrong spot or if he didn't, if he messed up, this case would be filed in the Western District of Arkansas. So they'll transfer it. Well, normally once a case transfers back to another court, they're assuming it's all good to go. Well, the party that Acer Storm was suing said, whoa, 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 guys, guys, he's trying to get around your rules of pre-screening. And the court looked at it and said, yeah, you are. And they started throwing those lawsuits out. So 
there's ways you can try to game the system, but they don't work very long if the other side's paying attention. And they're paying attention here. So he's going to gobble and eat all the hot dogs he wants coming up. Yeah, and if I've learned anything from the internet the last couple of years, uh, don't screw with the farms. <laughs> the farms is... Uh, I, I well, wish they stuck to the don't poke the cows 100% of the time, but... Uh... Yeah, don't screw with don't screw with the farms. Well, I mean, it's it's the farms, but it's really any website where the people are just minding their own business. They're documenting you because you're an idiot. Like right now, I have a page, and right now it's kind of like out of you know, like it's like look, here's a person that's on the internet. I'm in the multimedia section right now, but if I start doing goofy stuff, they're gonna throw me in the lol cow part. You know why? Because look at this guy; he's doing goofy things. He's acting like a lol cow. It, it's it's entirely up to you how the farms looks at you. It's it's just you know how do they classify you? Will you classify you as a crazy person? Why? Well, you're acting like a crazy person. You know you're acting like a you know a goofball and a legal terror because you're acting like a person who's terrorizing somebody with the legal system. If you quit doing stuff, they would have no reason to talk about you. And Acer Thor is no different. If he quit doing stuff, people would leave him alone. So, but he's out running around bullying, terrorizing, and harassing people because that's all he knows. Well, I'm just say it's all he knows. That's that's all he knows how to do to get what he wants. Yeah, he seems uh, definitely, definitely out there. Yeah, and, and the thing is, though, he knows what he's doing at the end of the day. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna torture you for being here. <laughs> this is my stream. Yes. Well, if you want to, we could talk. It well. You know, you play the Wear Turkey video. That is always funny. A couple is. minute clip of it. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I don't have a, a link on, for that. It's on the farm, so you can open it up. Uh, uh, I went to the farm video. once. I was uh, okay. it's like, oh, this isn't the place for me. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. You actually learn a lot about these people. And that's how you learn a lot about Acer Thorn. Like, I knew a lot about Acer Thorn on my own because I did a lot of the research. But I didn't know, like, the dad, the Stebbins, Stebbins versus Stebbins thing. It was a result of he had stabbed his dad. Like I learned that online, but you learn a lot about the internet there. But yeah, here you go. I love the title. <laughs> uh, Could prove powerful in years to come. What the Senate and other political institutions in the U. That was, was that a whole like two hot dogs? You just like I I'm not sure. Did... I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. you said schizophrenia, but like I don't think I mean, that goes far enough. I well, I don't know what it is. It might be schizoaffective disorder. I I don't know. I just know from my experience uh, working in a public defender's office, we get mental health training. So like recognizing people with issues and he's he's somebody that if he if he if i if he had been acting like this when i was talking to him i'd be making notes he's in distress or crisis and he needs you know screening asap yeah because i know this goes on for an hour in the clips like a minute but it's all the same thing just him making yeah pretty much the, the absolute worst noises oh, yeah. and being an absolute weirdo yes uh, Ashley Casey, this one, this one actually got me to laugh a little bit. If there are men out there worried about their daughters one day having sex, just show them this pic and they will forever abstain. <laughs> oh, that's one way to handle it. That is one way to handle it. Um, oh, that's so just, yeah, the way they, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's pretty bad. Well, when you when you when you when you're involved with the interaction and dealing with crazy people, they're gonna, you know, they're going to interact with you. They're going to come, you know. When your job is cataloging crazy people, they will come find you. So. I think, uh, yeah, I think Acer Thorn might be going for the uh, catch all the mental disorders. He might be. He might be. He might be. Uh, which one did they uh, censor? I, that's why I have mods on my channel because YouTube censors their stuff all the time. Yeah, YouTube. Well, YouTube censors a lot of things nowadays. 
have you uh did you see the uh stellar blade palette cleanser like uh throwing up on my stream no i had not seen this yet all right uh you know what stellar blade is right no okay, okay so okay. it's it's a new game coming out okay and it got a bunch of critique from the weirdo games journalist saying you know this is terrible it's not real women and it's... then the game company released them 3d scanning a woman oh, in... oh this is oh that's what that was i've seen the tweet yeah. about that where it's like that real women don't look like that and they're like yeah she works for us yeah yeah and they showed her sitting at a computer yes so uh gameplay footage palette cleanser <laughs> okay oh my god yeah <laughs> so uh yeah okay like Okay, that part though, like where the ass cheeks are, uh, like, like slightly underutilized water balloons. Okay, that's a bit hard to believe, but uh, the gameplay footage coming out has been yeah, like just I... <laughs> looks like two kids fighting under a blanket. There, damn. <laughs> yes. Look at that. Uh, it just goes on. There's so I many. I didn't see all those. Holy cow! Yeah, just everywhere. Like if you just type in Stellar yeah, those are some really a... those are some really good fucking physics. I'm sorry to swear, but I'm like, holy cow, those are amazing physics. Yes. Look at that. Yes. Does uh, she clap yes. her cheeks together to, as a defensive thing? Like if she doesn't, shock, I'll make her clap. They, they clap and it like <laughs> you have enemies attack and he's like ah, it's like the shockwave puts him back. Oh. yeah, it's. I saw the actual model they 3D scanned. I was like, oh, I want a oh. PlayStation just for this game now, oh. just to piss off games. They, they should, they should. Oh, so I'm surprised. Yeah, there's not enough, you know, there's enough trans inclusion in it. I'm glad there's none of that. Well, I, for like, I, I want to say the last six months, I've been covering uh, Eastern companies going back and forth yeah. on all the DEI woke stuff. Yeah. And it's like it it gets like one step up the up the stairs to being woke. And then somebody comes in with just an absolute skull crushing hammer and is like, you're all fired. It's it's fantastic. Well, that that is the one advantage of Asian culture and business culture is it's there's very little. It's not really built on innovation. You don't rock the boat. So. Yeah, I, Went there for I three weeks. Letting us sit there. Yeah, I'll let everybody enjoy it. I know everybody enjoys it. We'll just leave it. So, there. is there footage of like the boobs just bouncing around or anything like that, or is that all that there is? Because it's like, uh, I'm kind of curious to see how those work. I, I know they're there. I know they're there. Oh, I've is, seen is them. that the game up there? Is this both? Is this, yeah, this the game is too? it? Yes. Oh, this open is that up. all it. Wow. Yes. <laughs> That's why like, they're also This is angry. like Final Fantasy with like yes. really good boob graphics. Yes. Like I love Tifa and Aerith in Final Fantasy. Yeah. But Stellar Blade Eve just takes the absolute cake, pun intended. So so what's her name? The character's name? Uh Eve. Eve, okay. Uh, let's see if we can not catch another copyright you will catch a copyright for this i get copyrighted on everything i do it's oh, if it's really? not the if it's not the legitimate company it's the ones trying to copy claim everything oh it's just yeah. it's a pain to fight and every time i get one it kills the channel uh algorithm and growth it's yeah it's well i get those every once in a while like i remember doing a trial and it was like the uh it was a guy in florida accused of murdering his family and i was like okay cool so i get a copy i get a copyright content id thing and it was from uh it was from uh like new zealand rugby and it's it's because they have the automated things and i'm like i and i i i, I filled out the whole like yeah i could set to doing this and I, I just put at the top of my challenge to it i'm like you know at least like i i broke their balls over it and it took them like a day and they turned it back, but I've had a bunch of them take like 30 days to lift their content ID holds. So it happens. But I also, I got copy struck way back in the day by a long crime. Yeah, they're copyright cucks. I, no. Oh, well, well it, this was back in uh, 2022, like when I was still 
you know, working on it. And I got a week long vacation, so. Uh, so, AG Chemist brings up the uh, the actual. Hey, model. Ag's got that. Ag's got that yellow fever. You gonna I get mean, that I yellow fever too. down. <laughs> He's got that yellow fever down in uh down in New Orleans. But uh, that's her. Yeah, she is fucking gorgeous. Ugh. But yes, I saw the I saw the one person complaining, and then they showed like, no, literally here she works for us. She's doing work. Yes. Yeah, I just uh, I love it. I love watching them spurg out over seeing what women really like because they're used mm-hmm. to just the absolute disgusting state of uh, a lot yes. of women in the the West. But uh, yeah, no, I appreciate you coming on. It's been absolutely fantastic. Oh well, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Uh, it's a fun time. Actually... I've seen a, seen a lot. Of, see, uh, see a lot of people I see quite frequently over here hanging out. Uh, most of them are new. Okay. Uh, but, okay. So, I did a I did a weird thing with my channel. Uh, I'll explain more off stream because it's a little bit confusing. Okay. Uh, but I I essentially started really streaming like this in june and i wanted to see if i could actually make my channel grow without grifting off the backs of everybody else i didn't want to write somebody's coattails i wanted to try and make my channel and if it didn't happen it didn't happen you know i didn't want 2000 subs and to have like two people show up because yeah. nobody actually cared about my content uh so pretty much for a year these 600 subs like have kind of been an organic growth uh, so it's, yes. it's kind of weird. Like when I finally like, Hey, by the way, I've had this channel. Here's all my, here's all my, uh, subs. Here's all my videos. Everybody's like, I didn't even know I had a channel. I was like, that was kind of the point. <laughs> hmm. But uh, yeah, no, it's been, it's been a crazy road. Uh, I'm supposed to hop on another stream pretty soon. So I'm probably going to end this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, if you don't mind hanging out for a couple minutes, I, uh, yeah, sure. I want to say thanks. And, uh, Maybe we can stream again sometime when something else comes up that yeah. crosses over. No, no, we can definitely do that. Awesome. But guys, make sure you smash that like button. I've seen a bunch of new subscribers. If you haven't done that yet, do it. Yes, and guys, uh, do I'm it. yeah, I'm a terrible Jew. I always forget to grift myself. So uh, do the do the things that help me make money so I can be a better Jew. <laughs> and and what better day to do it while you're you're doing it on uh Easter? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, at least I'm not doing the uh, trans whatever BS. Day of remembrance, oh. yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I may be a Jew, but oi, even... Oi, vey, you know, oi, vey, you know, Jesus transitioned, too. He, oi, he transitioned from life, from death into life. Look, all I'm saying is there was a time when the Jews and the Christians teamed up to wipe out nonsense. And I'm for it. <laughs> I'm for it happening again. Uh, but guys, if you're watching on the replay... Here's Sean's YouTube channel. Go check him out. He's an awesome dude. Uh, and uh, yeah, we got to get you some more subs too. <laughs> never hurts. Never hurts. But guys, again, thank you for watching. And until the next one, be easy like sleazy. <laughs>